Hey guys, Simply Betty here. Today I'm going to be making grindle worm cultures. Lots of grindle worm cultures, or I guess preparing for it. So a while ago I had some really great grindle worm cultures and then they just all crashed. I don't, I don't really know what happened. Maybe I neglected them, maybe I let them go for a little too long, and they were really smelly and gross, so I just tossed them. And I went without grindle worms for a long time, but then I decided I really wanted them again because they're such a good food source. They're such a great live culture to have because they're small enough to where you can feed them to developing fry, and you can also, they're big enough to where you can also feed them to adults. And it's just a really nice all around live food culture to have. So I went ahead and I bought a, a grindle worm culture online and I had it shipped to me. And when I got it, all the worms were dead. It must have been like too cold during shipping or I don't know, something, who knows what happened, but none of the worms were actually actually alive. But um, because I bought a mature culture, that culture was full of eggs. And so I, I just kept it, I fed it, you know, I just kept feeding it and taking care of it. And slowly but surely the culture came back, like all the little eggs hatched and so they started reproducing. And now I finally, it's been like a couple months, finally have a pretty nice culture. But now it came in a very little container at which I haven't done anything with yet. And it also came full of mites, which I don't really like mites in my cultures. I feel like grindle worm cultures, any kind of live food culture is gonna do a lot better without mites as the competition. I don't think the mites actually harm your culture. It's messy. If you deal with like fruit flies, I think they can be really, really annoying and ruin fruit, fruit fly cultures. But today I want to go ahead and make some mite-free grindle worm cultures using, using a bunch of precautions to just try to make them as clean as possible to make sure that my grindle worms don't have any kind of competition going on in their little cultures and they can just reproduce as fast as possible. And that way, when I sell them on my website, which I, I'd like to eventually do and like spread grindle worms around, um, I'm not gonna be selling people mite cultures. I don't want that. I want nice, clean cultures of worms. When it comes to the containers that I put my worms in, um, you can use anything, anything at all. I, I like to try to recycle whenever I can, especially plastics. I mean, plastics are a huge problem nowadays. And whenever I feel like I have an empty container that I can just keep and maybe make into a future worm culture container, um, I put it in this little bag right here. So I have this uh, paper bag full of just containers I feel like I can use. Like I have a bunch of yogurt containers and the lids which are nice and deep. I have old Ziploc containers and deli containers in here and I feel like uh, I want to try to recycle so I'm gonna use these. I was actually thinking about running to Costco and buying like some nice deli containers to to make worm cultures in so I could so I could put them on my website and it would look nice and presentable but then I thought to myself why would I buy perfectly good plastic containers just to put worms in? It's kind of silly and I figure like people shouldn't mind buying worms in a nice clean recycled container, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with these. They're nice and clean and washed out and I don't know, that's just my opinion. I'm sure there's people out there who only want to buy worms in brand new containers. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my ventilation holes in the tops of the lids, which it's just gonna be like, maybe I'm gonna take a box cutter and just cut a hole or maybe I'll just like drill some holes. Then to make sure the containers are nice and sterile, that there's no mites like already hiding in them and make them just as clean as possible, um, I'm gonna go ahead and let them soak in, in some diluted bleach water for a little bit. Then I'll take the lids, I'll put some hot glue on there. I'm gonna put like a little piece of paper towel or a little piece of mesh to just, just to keep mites out of the ventilation holes. And then I should have a nice sterile container in which to put my dirt. I went ahead and I had to go charge up this and I'm using a little, just a little hole saw attachment that I think should work just fine, I hope. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my, you know, my container with the lid on and just go to town. I just realized the little bit in there that actually guides the hole, um, it broke off. Where did that go? Um, I don't think so. Oh well. I guess a box cutter might be the next best thing. Oh, too bad I have a dull one. This is horrible. Okay, I replaced the blade on this thing. It's still hardly better. Did I grab a dull blade? There we go. Took me a little while, but I made a nice little pentagon there. Now, this is going in this part of the sink, which is filled with some uh, diluted bleach water. Just to make sure there's nothing living in there, I wanna start with that nice sterile culture. Okay, I hate this method. Okay, I went out and I found another hole saw of mine that hopefully will work a little bit better. It's smaller though. That's 
better. All right, found the solution. So these yogurt containers, they're made with a really flimsy kind of plastic that cracks really easy, as I've discovered. But I think I remember reading somewhere that if you wanted to drill a hole and not crack plastic, you put tape over it. So let's just see if this is true. I don't wanna, I'm not gonna press down very hard either. Ah, nope. Dang it. Well, that's lame. I keep cracking these. Maybe I was wrong about the tape thing. Anyways, I have something coming in the mail. It's not gonna be here for a few more days. It's called a hot knife. And it's, it's meant for cutting through like styrofoam, cutting through plastic by melting it. It's just a super hot little knife. Um, that'll be here in a few days. I guess I, I'm just gonna wait to do this kind of plastic until I have my hot knife. If you've been following along on my 40 gallon rack project, I need to cut a whole bunch of these. And that's why I got this hot knife, to just save my wrists some of that work. Um, I can just bring these containers into a really well ventilated area, like the garage or outside, and, and just cut it I like like butter. Just cut it like butter. Okay, instead of the yogurt, Instead of the yogurt containers, I'm just gonna use these old Ziploc uh, plastic containers. Hopefully these don't crack. Nope. This big container here that I'm redoing, it used to be a microworm container, but now I'm gonna turn it into a grindleworm container. Just a nice big one to be like my mother culture until it gets too big for this. So I've gone ahead, I removed the lids from the bleach water, and then I also took some of the bleach water and cleaned off the counter, just to you know, be sure there's no, no little creatures hiding on here. I took some coffee filter of mine, which I think is gonna be a pretty good thing to have um, over these holes, because I mean, it's porous enough to where it should be letting air through, but also dense enough to where mites shouldn't be able to go through. Um, so I think coffee filter's a good idea. I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue them to the plastic, just like that. Made sure there was no gaps in the hot glue that's adhering pretty nicely. I think that'll be a good idea. I sure hope this is enough ventilation. I finished hot gluing all of the, you know, the paper on top of the holes, and I think that turned out pretty well. I took out the containers out of the bleach water in the sink. I rinsed them really well and just put the lids right on. So these should be pretty sterile. Overkill, maybe. The next thing to do is to go get my dirt. The dirt that I'm gonna use is just a regular potting soil. I might be using some coconut fiber too, like the reptile bedding, the bricks of condensed coconut, because it holds moisture really well. I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna go see how much dirt I have, put it in a little container, and bring it into the kitchen. Now this dirt's been sitting out in my garage. It's definitely not sterile. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in like a casserole dish, put it in the microwave, nuke it for like five minutes, just to make sure that there's no mites in it or nothing unwanted in it. Here's my casserole dish full of dirt. It's nice and, and moist. You gotta make sure there's it's moisture in there to really make sure that it heats up in the microwave. In for like four minutes. There's nothing quite like the smell of freshly microwaved dirt. Okay, my little girl just woke up from her nap, so I kinda have to wrap this up for now. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hot dirt that's cooled down a little bit into the containers and then um, I'll come back to this a little bit later and actually put the worms in after all the dirt has cooled down. She woke up, she came upstairs and asked what I was doing and I told her I was making dirt for dinner. <laughs> and she said, ew. <laughs> it's a lot later in the day now. I went ahead and I finished microwaving a few batches of dirt and putting it in the containers and letting it cool down. And now it's time to get the worms. So this here is the mite infested grindleworm culture that I have right now that I bought. The population has definitely recovered quite a bit. In fact, I'll try to get a nice close up look. You can see here, I have a big chunk of bread that there's enough worms in here to eat a big chunk of bread in about two days. You can see all the worms and there's a lot kind of on the bottom of the container. But along with all of the worms, you can see these little tiny white specks everywhere. Those are mites. These mites have been thriving. Yeah, they're just kind of all over the place and I can see them moving around, yuck. How am I supposed to take these grindle worms out of this culture and clean them so I can add them to new cultures without also introducing mites. Well, let me show you. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take a big glob of worms out, just like with my hands. I'm gonna have to put the phone down. I'm just gonna pick out some, some chunks, some globs, that's such a gross word, 
with my fingers and then I'm putting them straight into this little tiny jar of water. That didn't make me squeamish at all, by the way. If it doesn't bite, I'm not squeamish about it. So I put all the worms in this little jar of water and all of the mites are gonna float up to the surface of the water. See those little specks on the surface? Those are actually mites. So I'm just gonna leave this jar here for a minute. Um, I might even stir it around with a little toothpick, stir up all the little worms at the bottom. The worms are gonna be fine for a time, just in the water. And all of the mites are just gonna float up to the surface and then I'm gonna dump them out, put some more water in, repeat until I don't see any more mites floating up to the surface. I've been doing this for so long. I had to ask myself, Taylor, how far are you willing to go to make sure that your, your cultures that you're making don't have mites in them, and I decided pretty far. This was so filthy and full of mites, I had to rinse out this little tiny batch of worms that I pulled out, just a few little fingerfuls, like 10 times. And even then, I was still getting mites and still getting mites, and I think it's because there were a little, there were some flecks of bread and seeds and little bits in here um, that maybe the mites were sticking to, and so, Oh, I just had the hardest time getting them out. In this little container, it's mostly mite free. But then in this jar, I would pretty much bet money on there not being any mites in here. I basically, I took a tiny little pipette of the kind of dirty worms, I put them in here and I picked through them and I just, I think they're clean, I think they're good. Shoot, I see a mite floating on the surface. Now that like I have a tiny little batch that I think are, are clean, I'm gonna pipette them off the bottom and go ahead and put them in this culture. This is my nice, clean, sterile dirt. I put a few little flecks of food in here. Now this food had been frozen for quite a while, so it's not contaminated at all. I know that. So if this culture ends up having mites in it, I know it's because I didn't get all the mites out of the grindle worms that I'm actually putting in. Pipette worms off the bottom. And I'll do kind of a bunch on this little piece of bread. I'm putting them right on top of the food source. I'm exhausted. I went ahead and I rinsed and I cleaned and I rinsed and I cleaned that whole jar. And I made, and I'm pretty sure I got all the mites out. Like I feel pretty confident. Did I? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. It's pretty tough because not all of them were floating. So I have three nice cultures now that I've made and you know, if, if this, if I did it right, if this worked and there's no mites, they're gonna explode in population pretty rapidly. Because this one definitely took a really long time and it's totally because of all the mites. Once these ones show that they're actually producing lots of worms, I'm just gonna throw away that yucky mite one. I can't wait for this one to get going. Oh man, that's gonna feed a lot of fish. So thanks so much for watching me agonize over making a bunch of clean worm cultures. Feels good feels real good. Be sure to like and subscribe and have a great day. See you tomorrow.